multiplexers. The idea being that a multiplexer is where we have multiple inputs um, and we switch it to just a single output. So we could have here we have four inputs and one output. Um, a demultiplexer, we'll talk about it later, is sort of the other side here. So the multiplexer just does multiple inputs to a single output. Um, we name them by the number of inputs and the number of outputs. So for example, two to one mux um, has two inputs and one output. Four to one mux has four inputs, one output, and so forth. Um, equations of the mux. We have an example here. So if we're, we know that when binary zero, zero is here, this output gets connected, or when binary one is here, this output gets get connected. So that's the two input mux. For the four input mux, you can think of it as whatever the decimal equivalent of this number is, is the indexy of the input that gets connected to the output. So if you have one zero as an input, um, which is equivalent to two, it means I2 is being connected to the output. Um, if you want to look at how you could implement a mux, you can look at how we do the equation. So here um, we have, for example, S1 complement. So this is exactly like using the min terms, um, except in, we also add I0. So when S is 0 and S1 are 0, it selects I0. Um, and then you can just go along in the exact same fashion for the rest of the input. So this is one way to uh, implement a four input mux. Um, so that would be sort of a direct implementation of it. Extending this, we have uh, eight to one mux, for example. Um, and this should actually keep counting up, obviously. Fix these. Um, so four, five, six, seven. And we can use such a mux as actual design blocks. So say we were given this truth table and said implement it. So there's three inputs here um, and the one output. Previous ways we used, um, we could, for instance, create the sum of products, or products of some form. And we could use a k-map and we could reduce it. But an even easier way is just to directly use a mux. So if we have an 8 to 1 mux, we can realize that when each input um, combination is presented, so say 0, 0, 0 is presented, this input is passed through. Um, so all we do is we assign that input whatever value we, do, we want as the output. We can do that for each of these. Um, and in this way, you can just drop down a mux and create what you need. So it's super easy. Um, and if you have a larger number of inputs, so here I have a four inputs required, and all I have is a three input mux, or um, I just want to use a three input mux because it's simpler. And again, we can do this. Uh, so what we do is if we have what looks like a K map here, and we just write the truth table on that, so whatever it is, and it'll end up being, you know, it doesn't really matter um, what it ends up as, but then you group them together. So each of these groups I'm going to make has the exact same combination of A, B, and C values. So if I group here, um, group here, group here, group here. So each of these two groups, um, what you notice is, for example, if I take, say, this group here, um, for both of these elements, A is 0, B is 1, so A is 0, <coughs> B is 1, and C is 1. Um, so you notice that the only difference between the top and bottom is D in these elements. So here, um, so it, in that element, D is 1. Um, so D equals 1. And here, D equals 0. Um, so what we do is we use that information to then decide what uh, we put for each of the mux inputs. So back to right here. each of these inputs can either be 0, 1, D, or D complement. 
Um, so you can see, for example, that for 0, 0, 0, 0, so for this input, 0, 0, 0, um, we're selecting this block here. Um, and to get the correct output, what we know is that D is, when D is 0, the output is 1. When D is 1, the output is 0. So the input here is D complement. Um, for this example down here, where ABC is 0, 1, 1, so this is equivalent to such I3, we see that the output is 1 when D is 1, so the input here is D. Um, for other groups, it might be like this, 1, 0, 0, which is here, I4. Um, the output's just always 0, so we just put a 0 there, so that's D. And so forth. So using that, we can use a three to one or a eight to one mux for a four input variable um, or four input function. And again, this is really just a direct, easy way to implement them. The demultiplexer is the other side of this. So the demultiplexer is this side here, um, where we have one input and we route it to possible outputs. And again, the possible output you select with some input pins. Uh, when we use a DMUX, so the classic way that we were talking before is I have data and I route it to say Q1 by using the address 0, 1. Um, and this is the demultiplexer, so the opposite of the MUX, basically. We use DMUX as short. We can also use it as a decoder, we'll call it, um, where this input, we don't consider it routing, per se, to the output. Well, how we're going to use the input as an enable pin, so this is just... Uh, we'll call it E for enable. So most of the time you tie it high. So say we tie this pin to one. Um, so we connect it to a one or VCC. In which case, there will just be a single one outputted um, for whatever the input here is in decimal. So say if the input again is zero, one, decimal 1, Q1 will have a 1, everything else will be 0. Um, so when we're using it in that function where this data in is just called an enable, we'll use it as, a, we call it a decoder. Um, so that just has that written out. Note when we name decoders or DMUX, we call it by control inputs, colon, output symbols. So this example was a 2 to 4 decoder, or 2 to 4 mux, two address lines here, four output lines here. Um, for some reason, again, I don't know why it's different, but with a mux, we call it a 4 to 1 mux, so four inputs, one output, and there's still two address lines here. Um, a decoder we can use as a design block as well, and how we do this is... You know from before when we had a truth table, we could select the min terms um, and wherever there's a one. We say, okay, we will use these min terms and we or a whole bunch of min terms together. Um, so, you know, we have different min term inputs, A and B or whatever. Um, so we or all the min terms together. And this is, again, the sum of products form. So what we can do is actually realize that the decoder is effectively generating min terms. Um, so again, we tie enable to one, and what happens is say for one zero one as an input, this is going to select output five. Um, so Q five will have a one, everything else will be zero. <coughs> so this can be seen as equivalent to the min term A and B complement and C. Um, so, for example, if I had, if I had chosen to implement, you know, this function, say, I'm just going to make something up here. Um, so, say I had derived or was given from the truth table that this is where I want the ones. Um, what you can say this is, is, okay, all I'll do is our or all of the locations I want these ones to be. So maybe in this case, I'll use a three input OR gate and I'll connect this one, I'll connect this one, and I'll connect this one. Um, so the output here will be one only for these inputs. So for the input zero, zero, one, for the input 
zero one one and one one one. So we aim to go from truth table pretty quickly to final circuit using a decoder. Um, the other thing we talked about was this idea of tri-state gates. So everything up to now, it's either in one or zero. Those are the only two states we talk about. Um, in reality, we'll often run into a third uh, state, which we call the high impedance state. Uh, the symbol Z represents this, so one is high, zero is low, Z is um, high impedance, which is a fancy way of saying just disconnected. Um, so for a tri-state gate, what you have at the output is basically, you can think of it as another switch here. Um, and there'll be some enable pin. So if the enable pin is high, that switch is closed, just runs normally. If the enable pin is low, switch is open, and it's in the high impedance, aka disconnected state. Um, a truth table of this, so here we have the enable again, A and Q. So as I said, when the enable pin is low, the output is in this Z high impedance state. Um, we can use a three-state buffer because they're great for dealing with data transfer. So if we have two sides um, and they both want to talk to each other over a single wire, rather than having one wire this way, one wire that way, um, one side can just talk at a time. So for this side, side A, to talk to side B, um, all he has to do is drive this enable pin high and side B drives it low. So this is basically internally disconnected, um, and this is internally connected, like that. So the result is that side A here can talk to side B, um, and side B just reads it off this other output here. Conversely, side B could be the one that talks by driving the enable pin low, um, if this guy opens his, the data would flow here, um, and it's received there. So it's transmitted here, received there. Um, so that's one of the uses of the three-state buffers, we'll see.